Welcome to another Local Voices interview on 94.7 KPIP. The Peacemakers Quilting Group is looking forward to a very special quilt show on July 31st, 2021, which will be featuring the Missouri State Bicentennial Quilt. With me today to talk about the quilt show is one of the members of the Peacemakers Quilting Group, Linda Lemke. Thank you so much for being with us today, Linda. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and have the opportunity to talk about our quilt show. Well, tell us a little bit about the Peacemakers Quilting Group, who is sponsoring the show. How many members do you have in your group? The Peacemakers is a group of five women from Fayette. It used to be bigger, but we're down to five, who all share a love of quilting and a desire to help our community. Do you meet regularly? No, the original group did, but as we've gotten older, we tended to carry out most of our business through emails and an occasional meeting prior to one of our events, a Quilt of Valor presentation or a quilt show, or maybe after one of those as kind of a celebration. How long have the Peacemakers quilting group been around? The original Peacemakers started meeting, we think, in 2003 or 2004. Trish Hiljadik, Connie Shea, and Martha Baylor were looking for some type of creative outlet for the women of Lynn Memorial and decided to start a quilting or a quilting social group. The first one or two years, the group met in the Fellowship Hall at Lynn and sewed their own projects. But in 2004, the group decided to do a block of the month Underground Railroad quilt, which each member would work on on the same block during the month's meeting. I believe that four women completed their Underground Railroad quilts. By the way, the Underground Railroad quilt uses blocks that were thought to be used during the Civil War to convey messages to slaves escaping to the North through the Underground Railroad. Over the year, the group has undergone changes in membership and purpose and is now a more ecumenical group, although we still retain some of our ties to Lynn. Now, we know the show will be held at Lynn Memorial Church on the CMU campus. Uh, What can people expect to see at the show then there at Lynn Memorial? Visitors to the show can expect to see a a spectacular exhibit of approximately 150 quilts filling the sanctuary of the church. It's usually a breathtaking display of color. In the past, many visitors have commented on the amount of thought, work, and love that has gone into the creation of each of the quilts and on the variety and intricacy of the designs used by the quilters. Of course, the highlight of this year's show will be the Missouri State Bicentennial Quilt, which will take center stage in the front of the church. Other entries will be draped over the chairs in the church, hung from the balcony, and specially made quilt stands. When Central Methodists decided to remove the pews from the sanctuary, peacemakers were devastated. How would we show our quilts. However, in the ensuing years, we have learned to arrange the chairs in the sanctuary in such a way as to show the quilts to their best advantage and to allow for aisles where people can walk between the quilts. Tell me about the Missouri State Bicentennial Quilt. How was it made and, and what does it represent about our state? If I can, I'd like to quote from the Bicentennial Quilt website, and I quote, Since the pioneer days of the American Midwest, Quilts have been a cornerstone of the Missouri culture, fashion, and tradition. In honor of our state's 200th year anniversary, the State Historical Society of Missouri and the Missouri Star Quilt Company, in partnership with the Missouri State Quilters Guild, teamed up to create the Missouri Bicentennial Quilt. With one quilt block to represent every Missouri county and the independent city of St. Louis, the Missouri Bicentennial Quilt showcases the unique characteristics of the Missouri culture and style. Unquote. Who did the block for our county, Howard County? Joe Rohr, Dorothy Jean Ayers, and I decided to submit blocks for the competition. We each pieced a variation of the block Mother's Choice, and jo- Joe's was chosen to go into the bicentennial quilt. We chose the block because Howard County is known as the mother of counties. Since Howard County is fairly centrally located, I embroidered a small central square for each of our blocks with a small state of Missouri and a tiny heart to represent Howard County. Jo chose her fabrics in browns, greens, and blues to represent the muddy Missouri River, the crops and croplands, and the streams, lakes, and sky. So Joe's got picked and is in the Missouri State Bicentennial Quilt. That's an honor. I can't wait to see it. Her block is beautiful. She did a wonderful job of piecing it. Very tiny, very small pieces. What an honor. I can't wait to see it. Now, the Peacemakers are sponsoring the quilt show this year to raise money through free will donations. What are you going to do with the free will donations? 
We try to send a sizable donation to the Fayette Ministerial Alliance Food Pantry after each show and to keep some of the money for our Quilt of Valor project. Uh, Tell me about your Quilt of Valor project. The Quilt of Valor is a national organization whose goal is to cover all those service members and veterans touched by war with wartime quilts called Quilts of Valor. It's our goal as peacemakers to present a Quilt of Valor to every qualified person in the Fayette area. We became part of the organization in 2010 and presented our first Quilt of Valor in 2010 to Charlie Adams, a World War II vet who had served on Iwo Jima. Since that first quilt, we have presented over 50 Quilts of Valor, and there will be a large display of Quilts of Valor at our quilt show. We are always looking for new veterans, new servicemen to give quilts to, and would be happy to try to determine if someone you know is eligible for one of those quilts. That's fascinating. And the great part about this whole quilt show is that while you're listening to this, you're still signing up entrants who want to enter the show. How can people find out more about entering a quilt in the show? You can visit our website, which is fayettefestival.org. It should be the Fayette Festival of the Arts website, but because it was canceled, we've kind of taken it over. We've always worked in conjunction with the Fayette Festival. Or you can contact me or one of the other peacemakers. My email is mathedperson at yahoo.com. That's M-A-T-H-E-D-P-E-R-S-O-N at yahoo.com. Do you have to have done the quilt yourself to enter it in the show? Our quilt show is unique in that you don't need to have made a quilt yourself to enter it in the show. Although most of the entries were made by individuals showing the quilt, many were gifted to these individuals or family heirlooms are our Amish quilts that they've purchased. Quilts can be any size from table toppers and wall hangings to king size quilts. They may be pieced, embroidered, appliqued, or a combination of all three. Some are hand quilted, others machine quilted. We expect this year to have a number of so-called COVID quilts. Many quilters found their hobby to be a blessing when they were forced to shelter at home, and many a UFO, what quilters called unfinished objects, (laughs) was completed during this time. I completed probably about six myself. My goodness. Now, does entering a quilt in the show cost anything? No, it doesn't cost anything to enter a quilt in the show. You just need to send in an entry form and then get it to the church the Friday before the show. And does going to see the show cost you anything? No, in the past we have charged an entrance fee, but we felt as a group that we did not want to charge people to come and see the bicentennial quilt. We felt like that was something that should be open to anyone. However, if visitors will have the opportunity to make a free will offering, and we, we hope they'll be generous because that money will go to the Fayette Food Pantry. And again, when is the deadline to enter a quilt in the show? The deadline is July 20th. Entry forms are due to me no later than July 20th. And I would appreciate having them sooner rather than later because it's a big project to type up the booklet that where we put all the names in all the quilts. Um, Those can be sent to me by email or by U.S. Postal Service, and all the information is available on the website, www.fayettefestival.org. Is there a limit on the number of quilts people can enter in the show? No. You can enter as many as you want. In fact, I have one woman who has entered 20 quilts for this show. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) So it doesn't cost you a thing to enter a quilt in the show, and it doesn't cost you anything to come see the show. So... Tell us again, where will the show be? Okay, the show will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. July 31st in the sanctuary of Lynn Memorial on the campus of Central Methodist University. And there will be a a marketplace at the same time in the um, breezeway next to the church where you can buy quilting, small objects that have been quilted, quilting books, quilting, some quilting supplies. Uh, Where, again, can people find out more about the show? Our website, we have a Facebook page that's Peacemaker, that you can find by going to Facebook and looking for Peacemakers. And we have flyers posted around town, um, and I believe we have bookmarks in the library. You can also contact one of the Peacemakers, Dorothy Jean Ayers, Connie Shea, Joe Rohr, Julie Manise, or me. Well, that sounds fabulous. Now, did we miss anything? 
No, we just hope that a lot of people will come and support the show by entering their quilts and by attending the show. And uh, I think this will be a once in a lifetime opportunity to see a really, really special quilt. It certainly will. All right, well, thank you for being with us today, Linda. And I hope that the quilt show goes very well this year. Thank you for having me and giving me the opportunity to tell others about our quilt show and to hopefully get some new entries for the show. That'd be great. (laughs) Don't miss the Peacemakers Quilt Show. It will be July 31st of this year from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And it will be in the sanctuary of the Paul H. Lynn Memorial United Methodist Church on the CMU campus. For KPIP's Local Voices, I'm Rachel Steele.